Hey everybody, we're going to move on to part 19 of our tutorial series. So in this video, I'm going to try to uh, try to get spatial grid going on so that we can limit how many checks we do, um, our collision checks we do. So right now, with our current system, we are doing a collision check for every entity that is on the screen. So that means that uh, we are doing two collision checks every time. So when we have 500 entities on the screen, that means no matter where the entities are, they could be off of the screen or anything, we're still going to be doing collision checks for every single one. And that will slow our system down a lot once we get hundreds of entities on the screen. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to implement a spatial grid. So let me try to explain this um, and how it works. So this is not going to be pretty at all. So we're going to think of our our uh, level or our world broken down into grids like so. So the size of the grid we can play around with um, until we find one that works best, but uh, that's just tweaking. But this is the general concept. So right here we have our world. It's broken down into uh, these grid pieces. So let's say we have an entity or a tree or something and it resides right here this is the collision area for that entity um and our character or our player is over here okay let's make him black um uh, anyways what the concept of this is is we've broken it down into these grids and what we do is we just retrieve only entities that are within this grid space so as of right now let's put that back as of right now in this situation here uh, put come on we will change this we'll have a character black here and another one over here so what it does is it takes its position and and it passes it into the spatial grid and tries to retrieve any entities that are currently in this grid square. Um, so as of right now, we wouldn't do any collision checks. We wouldn't waste any time doing a collision check because we know that this this entity is not even anywhere near us. Um, and and we only do it within this square. So if our entity then moves. So let's say we have something like so, uh, right here. Now what the spatial grid will do is it will automatically check to see if there are any entities inside either of these two boxes. See, because our entity resides in both. So when it passes in its position, it will know based on the size to pull it out of, uh, to, to try to pull any candidates out of these two. Same thing can be said this way and also like this so if we have if we have an entity who is in four spaces it will automatically know to pull any entities that are in these spaces so that also would account for if we had an entity like this so this entity resides in two squares one of which is one of our squares that we reside in so we, now we'll have one entity that we are checking. Um, same thing can be said if we had an entity right here. We would then have two entities that we're now checking, and here we would have three. But we could have a bunch over here as well, and we would not waste our time with these three off to the left. We'll only worry about ones that reside in the same square as us. Now, that being said, also when you move off of a grid square, so let's say you are moving only while you're moving we're going to remove you from wherever you were and place you into the new square if that's where you are so let's say you you moved from this square and then you come over here now you were in this one over here but now we've updated you we've removed you from this square and put you into this one and what that does is now any other entities that uh, are moving and colliding they're updating where they are in our spatial grid only when they move. All right, so let's 
get going on this. This is going to be, uh, this is going to be a big, a big project, I believe. So what we'll do is we'll come in here. We'll go into our utilities and we're going to create a new JavaScript file and it's going to be called spatial grid with a T. All right. We are going to define the class. It's going to extend the class library like so. And we're going to have some variables. We're going to have width, height, size, and our grid. All right. Now we're going to define our spatial grid. It's going to be class.extend. And it will have the initializer. This function will take in a width, a height, and a size. So the size is going to be what is the grid size? What are the size of the uh, of our grid spaces? So once we have that, we will now set width equal to, and we're going to parse this as an integer, the width that we passed in divided by the size that we passed in. So this will give us the width or the amount of grid squares uh, on the x or the amount of columns. And then height will be the same thing, parse int. The height divided by our size will give us the number of rows. And we can set size equal to the size we passed in. And we'll set grid equal to a blank array. And we can fill these in now. So we're going to do a for loop to actually um, set the size of this um, this array. So we'll say i is equal to 0. Well, var i is equal to 0. i is less than or equal to less than or equal to width and then i plus plus. In here we will then say grid i is equal to a blank array and we'll do our for loop for our height. So var uh, j is equal to 0, j is less than or equal to height, j++. Plus plus. And in here we can say grid i j is also equal to an array. So now we'll be able to push items into any of the, uh, the grid squares uh, of this array. So we've, we've created a multidimensional array with, a, with uh, width or columns and rows. And now we can push things into these columns and rows. All right. So the first thing that we're going to create is our retrieve. So we, this will retrieve all other entities in grid squares. So in our grid square. So how this will work is we'll say retrieve into function. And it's going to take in a rectangle and an entity. So we're passing in a rectangle and this is going to be the position on the screen that the that the bounding box um, is going to be and the size of the bounding box. And then we're going to use an entity as a reference to uh, or you know as reference to the correct entity that we're adding or pulling out in this case. So we've got retrieve first um, we could do insert. Let's actually, they're going to be the exact same. Um, for the most part, it's going to look very similar. So let's start with insert because it just kind of makes sense to insert something first. All right. So inside of the insert function, we're going to create some variables. So we're going to say start X is going to be equal to math dot max. This is going to look familiar to you. This is kind of how we're doing the tiles um, to just get the tiles that are visible. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to only retrieve the the positions that the 
uh, rectangle overlaps. So all of the grid squares that the rectangle is currently um, over top of. And to do it is very similar to how we're doing the tile. So we'll parse integer the rectangles x divided by the size, our size. So what this is saying is we're either going to get uh, 0 or we're going to get um, the position uh, the the position on the x um, whichever one is greater so if, if a entity is less than zero that means it's out of the spatial grid and we'll just consider it uh, in the zero zero position of the array then we can say var start y is equal to math dot max we'll do the same thing zero parse int rect dot y divided by size and then we're going to get the ending position so end x is equal to math dot min and it's either going to be the width so the, the whichever one is smaller either the width um, or we'll say parse int the rectangle dot x plus the rectangles width rec dot width and then we'll divide that by size so this is going to get the furthest position to the right so we're going to add the the width of the rectangle and get the furthest grid square to the right and the same thing with y math dot min height or parsent the rectangle dot y plus the rectangle dot height and we can divide these both by size so now we've created a range of of grid squares that we're going to loop through in uh and add our current entity into each one that is um that fits this uh this range so we can say for y and we're going to start on the y that's going to be equal to start y to begin then we're going to say as long as y is less than or equal to end y we're going to increment y and very similarly for x we can say var x and var y is equal to start x and as long as x is less than or equal to end x then we will increment x and we can go if x y oh in grid grid x y dot index of the entity so what we're going to check is if the entity already exists we're not going to put it in there so if the index is equal to equal to negative one meaning that the current entity does not exist in there then we will add the entity and only if it doesn't already exist so we'll say grid x y dot push and we'll push in that entity into the array so this is the entire insert function again we're creating a range a range of all the grid uh, the grid squares essentially that the that the entity is overlapping then we're pushing it in pushing the entity into each one of those grid squares and we're going to do a very similar function when it comes to retrieving oh and we want to insert up here we'll say insert entities in grid square and again we will retrieve retrieve all other entities from grid square and this will be our retrieve function and it is going to be so similar that we are going to copy some stuff just to save time so it will be retrieve and that's a function that's going to take in a rectangle and an entity and we are going to copy everything here and we need to spell function right 
All right, we're, there is going to be uh, another thing though, and we're going to add a variable right below our end y, and it's going to be called oops, entities. And we're going to set that equal to a blank array. So now what we do is we're going to start pushing only if, and we're going to say remove this index of here. We're going to do something similar. It's going to say if entity and we will actually go one step further in here and this this will be a uh, grid x y dot for each so we're going to loop through the array that's that we created whenever we've inserted entities we've created an array in that grid square so we're going to loop through the array within that grid square, grabbing all of the entities that are inside of that current grid square. So this is a function, and we can refer to the entity as, let's just say E. And I will remove that from there. All right. So what we can do is we can check to see if E is equal equal to the entity. So if if Oh, and we'll say not equal right there. So then essentially, we're just going to say if this entity that's inside of the grid square is not the current entity that, that is making the check, um, then we will say entities dot push, and then we will push in E. So what we've what we've basically did is we've created the range again to see where what um what grid squares the entity that's making the tr the the call to the retrieve function what squares it's overlapping then we're looping through all of those squares and each square that we loop we grab uh we loop through all of its entities and push them into a central entities array and what this will do is this will build up an array of entities that are within our grid squares and then we can once we've built those and we've we've uh added all of the entities that are that we could possibly collide with because they're within our grid squares, we will return that. So we return entities, which are essentially going to be our candidates. So hopefully this makes sense. We're we're pushing in a rectangle, which is going to take the in um and set the position of our of our uh, entity. So whether it is where the entity currently is or not, that can change. And that's why we pass in a, a separate thing other than just the entity. Because we know we can get the entity's position and we can get the entity's bounding box and its bounding box width and all that. But instead, we're going to manually put in where we want this entity to be positioned. Um, this way, in the future, if we want to check collisions at a position that the entity currently isn't at, we can still pop in a different bounding box to do that. And we, it'll essentially be checking um, collisions in a different location than where the current entity is. Uh, it's not about knowing specifically when we would ever use that, but just to have that option there because it could be a possibility. So hopefully this is done correctly and we can move on. The next thing after this that we will do is the remove. And remove is going to do the same stuff again. So this will remove entity from grid square. All right, so let's get this going. Remove. And that's a function, and it's going to take a rectangle and an entity. All right, so we will copy all of this again, and we'll make some modifications. So the let's see what we need to do. I think it's going to be the exact same thing, except we're going to check if it is equal, then we will say grid x. Oh, and you know what? We need to 
Let's do it like so. We'll take this out and we'll say four bar i is equal to zero. I is less than grid x y dot length i plus plus. And we can say if grid x y at index i is equal equal to the entity, we can just splice it out. So grid x y dot splice i and 1. So we're splicing at whatever index the entity was in at and then we're only splicing out one uh, one index. So that will remove the current entity. So we don't need this here and we don't need to return anything. So this should uh, this should remove an entity from a grid square. Now the next thing that we can do is completely uh, up to you. You don't have to do this, but I'm just going to throw this function in. We're going to say render grid squares. So this is a function that we can call that will render our spatial grid. We don't have to call it. It's really not something that you would do most of the time during develop uh, during like a professional release or anything. You're not going to show your grid squares, but it's something that this will have for development purposes that will be helpful. So we'll say render function. It's going to take a graphics brush and a handler because we're not going to need a handler for anything else but this function. So there's no need to add it to the constructor. So we'll say for y equals zero, y is less than or equal to height y plus plus, and for x is equal to 0 and let me throw bars in here and x is less than or equal to width and x plus plus so we're going to loop through and uh, we will display the the grid this way so we'll create an x position and that's going to be equal to x times the size we're going to subtract from it the handler dot get game camera dot get x offset and same thing for y position so this is just our offset so that as the camera moves our spatial grid is going to visually move with it Okay, so then once we've did that, we can just say g dot stroke rectangle at the x position and the y position and using the size that we pass in. Now one more thing that I'm going to do is we're going to say if grid x y dot length, so if the length is greater than zero, so that means if there's an entity inside of a grid square, let's render that a different way so that we can tell that we have entities inside of the grid square. So g dot fill style, we're going to set this to blue just for now. And then we'll say g dot fill rectangle. We're going to fill it at the x position, the y position, and the size. So essentially if there is an entity inside of a grid square, we're going to render that grid square uh, and fill it with um, blue. So that that is a blue square. You'll see uh, it's just going to be how we display um, whether a entity is inside of that square. The next thing we're going to do, we're going to do some getters. Say get width is a function. It's equal to, uh, that's going to return width. And we'll say get height. It's going to return height and get size. Lastly, we come down here and return spatial grid. So if we have no errors, 
this is the class in a nutshell. The render function again is optional. Um, it'll just be better for development. So now this is this is essentially all that's needed here. Um, so like always, there are a few things that we're going to want to do. And hopefully I don't have too many errors, but we'll move on. Uh, one thing we need to do is go into our app.js and go down to SPA right here. S-P-A-T-I-L grid. And that's going to be in app slash classes slash utils slash space spatial grid all right so there's a few things that we'll need to do to get this working in our other classes we'll first go to the world class and we will add spatial grid in here spatial grid and we'll return spatial grid Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these trees and I'm going to put them underneath the load world. <clears throat> and then I will say this dot spatial grid spatial grid is equal to a new spatial grid. And this takes in again, uh, I believe a width, a height and a size. So let's just use, and you know what? We need to take this and put this underneath the load world as well because we need to have the width already loaded. So we will take uh, this dot width as the width, this dot height as the height, and we can just put, let's say, 50 in there or maybe even 75. We'll tweak those numbers around. <clears throat> and we'll also come down to the uh, getters down here and we'll say get spatial grid so we create a function so that we have access to the spatial grid in our other classes return this dot spatial grid so in our entity manager one thing that we're going to come and change is down here where we add an entity we're going to also insert it into the spatial grid so we will say uh, I believe it is handler dot get world dot get spatial grid dot insert and we're going to create a new rectangle so if we come up here we don't have rectangle so let's insert rectangle into our class and import it so rectangle rectangle now we have access to it and we can create this rectangle so I am going to just insert it at e dot X plus e dot bounds dot X same thing e dot Y plus e dot bounds dot Y so we're going to get the position of the bounds specifically on the screen um, by adding it to the current position of the entity. And then we just use e.bounds.width, e.bounds.height. And then we actually will pass in e so that it can insert it into the grid. So if this is done correctly, we've now created, a, in this case, it'll be a tree and it will be inserted directly into the spatial grid in the whichever grid pieces or grid squares that it belongs in any other entities that we add into the uh, entity manager will have the same function happen to them so uh let's see what this does if we've got any errors so it doesn't look like there's any errors So now let's try to render our grid. So I'll come up here into the render um, of the entities and let's render it up here. So we'll just say handler.getworld.getspatialgrid.render and this is going to take G 
and handler. Get spatial grid. Oh, we have to put open close parentheses for our get world. So our grid is only one square. That is definitely not good. <clears throat> so let's see where we've uh, made our mistake in the render function. Do, 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 do. Go to spatial grid. X, Y. All right, let's see in our world if maybe we are creating this grid incorrectly. This dot width, this dot height, and 75. Let's see. All right, so I believe that we just have to times uh, our width here by tile dot tile width and our height by tile dot tile height um oops and the reason for this is because right now our width is all based on how many tiles and how and our height is by tiles to get the actual width in pixels we have to multiply it by the hit the width and height tile dot tile height and let's make sure we do this right all right let's see what we have now there we go. So now if you look, we have a spatial grid and we have these two entities uh, currently placed in the grid. So we've got this going. We've got it started. The next thing we need to do is we need to update our candidates only based on uh, entities that we retrieve from our current squares. And we need to place our entity inside of a square so in the future, like our player, so in the future, he's in the square, and and uh, others can collide with him and and uh, and interact as well. Not just one character can interact, uh, or one a uh, one entity. So what we're going to do is go into our creature, and we're going to go into that move function here, and I'm going to create another surrounding if statement and it's going to say if math.absolute x move is greater than zero or math.absolute y move is greater than zero and these are this dot x move and this dot y move or so the other way around so what this is going to do is we're going to just start using this as a a different oops an, another conditional before we even decide whether we're going to move or not so this is going to just say only if we are actually going we are actually uh, moving will we do these next things so what we're going to do in here is we're going to go this dot handler dot get world dot get spatial grid dot remove and we're going to remove ourselves from uh from the grid so wherever we currently are before we do our move so we'll say new rectangle and it's going to be this dot x plus this dot bounds dot x and this dot y plus this dot bounds dot y and then this dot bounds dot width and this dot bounds dot height so and then secondly or lastly after the new rectangle we're going to pass in this as the entity so we are using that remove function that we created we're going to remove ourselves from the current grid square only if we're going to move and reinsert ourselves at the end after we moved to whichever square we are going to be in so insert so we're removing ourselves from a grid adding ourselves into a new grid square 
only if we've moved at all. And then also the insert only will insert if we've if we don't already exist in there. That's part of our our rules. So if this is working correctly, we should see our entity uh, get placed in there. Oh, rectangle, it was not added to it. So we have to come up here and before we can rectangle and let's do single quote tile and rectangle. So now let's get ourselves access to the re rectangle class. So there, so now you can see that our character's bounding box is uh, we're being added and removed from squares. You can see how many squares we're taking up. But we still are not actually doing any optimization. We are still checking every single entity on the screen. So now, now we will take what we've got and uh, we should be able to easily, um, at, easily add the functionality or change this functionality here from getting all the entities to just getting the candidates for collision. So we'll say get, instead of get entity manager, we'll say get spatial grid. And we'll say dot retrieve. And let's just do some copying here. We'll copy this rectangle. And then let's just copy the whole line come into entity and we'll say candidates are going to be equal to retrieve and then we're passing in a rectangle with the current bounds uh, X Y now the only thing is is I believe we want to add to this the X offset and the Y offset there now we should only we should only have candidates that we're actually checking if they're in the same square so we'll say console.log and then we'll log candidates that length so let's see what happens if we're if we do it this way see if there's any errors none Okay, so we have zero candidates right now. We're not even checking anyone for collision. There's no one to even check. Still no one. And then here we are. We've got one check. We've got zero. And we come here. We have one to check. So as you can see, now we're checking. And there is only checks being done on entities that are within our grid square. Now, one thing we can do, um, we can tweak these numbers and play with the numbers uh, as far as the size. So if we come into our world, we can change the size from 75 to say like 100. Now we've got bigger squares and you can see that if we, if we come in here, We actually have two candidates because the size of our squares have grown and they actually, their bounding box reside in these two, um, these two squares and our, so does our bounding box. So now we have two candidates to check. Now we have one, one, but when we're overlapping, we have two. So this way we've now optimized it so that no matter how many entities are on the screen, um, we only check we only check the ones that are uh, even possible for us to collide with and once we start getting more entities in there and they're adding themselves and removing themselves this will actually be much better much quicker than if we didn't have any uh, any of this and we were trying to loop through every entity on the screen I am glad that we got through this I'm hope hoping that you all understand um, you know it's generally the, the biggest part is just understanding that, that we're creating, um, we're figuring out which grid squares to check the same kind of way that we check to see which tiles to show on the screen. It's all based on um, what range 
you know, we set. So the where we were using the size of the canvas, now we're using the size of a bounding box um, to determine it. To determine it. So, um, but this is I'm going to count this tutorial done, and in the next tutorial, maybe we'll add uh, a little bit more. Let's let's maybe play around, have some fun. I'll I'll, I'll add like a health bar to the character to the to uh, the entity, and then from there. I think I have some really cool stuff that I'm wanting to get going. So, uh, including a pathfinding algorithm that is even more complex than just the spatial grid was. Um, the pathfinding algorithm, which will be cool, especially if we start, let's say, we have our character here and we want to control our character, or more than one, by clicking on a specific spot on the screen. So the one problem that we'd have is we can't go through walls so we need to have some sort of intelligent way to figure out how to get here even though we have things and obstacles in the way uh, that's that's something that I'm looking forward to for sure um, for now we're just play around with this add tons of trees if you want and uh, and have have fun with it I will see you guys in the next video